So, first things first, Michelle, how are you? I'm great. Good to hear. So, well, before we talk about the new album, I'd like to jump back to the beginning a little bit. And you've discussed uh, before about, about how creativity was perceived while growing up. So, but when did you know that, that you were a creative person, that you liked art, that you liked music? I think from a very young age, and I think that my upbringing really helped to breed that in me. Okay. Um, neither one of my parents uh, went to college or were particularly creative, and I don't know if that was a result of the way that they were brought up. They both grew up uh, in very, very poor households, mm -hmm. and I think it was not even something that they could have ever considered in their lives, and I was lucky to, to have um, a much more privileged upbringing, and so um, I had a lot uh, less to worry about um, financially. And uh, I was an only child and I grew up in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Oregon in, in the mm. United States and uh, I had a lot of time alone. And so I think that I was always kind of, there was like not really that many neighboring children. And so I had a lot of time in nature by myself and uh, had to entertain myself a lot. And I definitely always felt like I was like, wanting to write stories or I knew from a very young age that I, I really wanted to be a writer. Um, so for a lot of my life I was trying to make sense of what I could realistically do with that because right. it was not really something that my parents um, encouraged really. I mean particularly with music, uh, my mother wouldn't let me buy a guitar until I was 16 years old. Okay. I was like forbidden to play the guitar. Okay. Um, but I, I took piano lessons since I was five and so I had like some musical skill uh, so then when I finally was able to learn how to play the guitar uh, when I was 16, it like meant so much to me. And I started writing songs pretty much immediately. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I always kind of knew that I was a creative okay. person. Uh, it was like always like playing like imaginary games and that kind of thing, always wanting to create some kind of story. So mm -hmm. uh, I think I've always really enjoyed that in my life. But I think particularly now I realize um, how, how huge of a part of that it is in me. and. Uh, one thing that also really helped me realize that was working my first nine to five job. Okay. Um, when I was 25, I, I worked uh, as a sales assistant in advertising for a year, and it was like the first real grueling nine to five job I had, where I was just at a desk all day, and it felt like I was so busy all day from nine to five, and I would leave work feeling just like I didn't do anything, like right. completely unfulfilled, and like I hadn't accomplished anything, and I think that then more than ever I realized that I needed to be, I needed to work creatively or else mm -hmm. I would never have like a good night's sleep. Like the fulfillment or something. Yeah, just, it was crazy to, to, to spend every day in this place and, and all of this time and all of these hours at a desk and just leave feeling like I did nothing at all. Right. Yeah. And I want to go into the, the storytelling or the story writing because you said that was kind of one of the first things that arose. So. What, this may, may sound vague, but what did you get out of it? What did you get out of kind of writing your thoughts down or, or coming up with stories? I don't know, I think it was just a way of entertaining myself or creating like some kind of uh, world that I wanted to live in, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I also I remember playing a lot of like imaginary games when I was a child with, with a friend and I think that was really the very beginning of like wanting to I had this like really fulfilling feeling of creating nothing, creating something out of nothing. It was mm -hmm. really exciting for me. And you mentioned the music, and then it wasn't until 16 that you could play uh, the guitar. But did music play a role before? Did you listen to a lot of music? Yeah, I mean, I grew up, like I said, I grew up as an only child, and I think that a lot of times it's really hard. Neither one of my parents were really interested in music, mm -hmm. and I didn't have any siblings to kind of introduce me to any music. So I was kind of like a late bloomer a little bit. Right. Uh, with my musical taste because everything that I uh, enjoyed were, was something that I had to discover. So uh, it wasn't until like middle school when I started having like friends that I just, right. uh, that with real taste in, in music and that kind of thing, um, that I started listening to more music. This is really embarrassing, but when I was in elementary school, I watched a lot of anime growing up and I was really into um, like anime soundtracks and right. like those kinds of sounds are like actually sampled on my first record. Uh, there are a couple of like hidden anime samples in there, and I think that that was kind of like the beginning of my interest in, in music. Like it's a lot of like really catchy pop arrangements uh, mm -hmm. that are really really full arrangements, sure. uh, and I think that that's kind of something that that I do in my music now. So 
uh, that, that might be like the very, my first beginning memories of, of listening to music and enjoying it. Very quickly then, what, which was one of your favorites? Uh, I, wa I really liked like Oh My Goddess and uh, Ranma One Half and like Tenchi Muyo and uh, Serial Experiments Lane and Cowboy Bebop, like okay. every Miyazaki movie. Like. Fair enough, fair enough. So then, uh, well, so you, around 16, you get your own guitar. What did you say to convince your parents to, to allow you a guitar? I think that they just, I just wore them down over time. <laughs> um, my mom was like really afraid that I was gonna forget the piano and that uh, she had invested so much money in me taking piano lessons and it was something I was never really interested in to begin with, uh, probably because I was forced into it. Um, but yeah, when, uh, I think I just wore her down over time. Okay. It was like three years of begging her for a guitar until she finally relented and allowed me to get like a really shitty $100 Yamaha from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Did it take you long, long to write a song that you were proud of? I think I was like, from the first song I wrote, okay. I was like, I'm a genius. <laughs> so okay. like, I think that like, you're always like kind of chasing that feeling. I think every time I write a song, I'm always like, really taken aback that I've written a, a new song and it always feels like I'm so brilliant <laughs> and then a, and then like a week passes and I'm like oh it's not that good <laughs> okay but is, this, uh, is that still how you how you write yeah definitely I think I think that every time I write a, a, a new song it's like wow I can't believe I did that it's almost right. like there's this like initial panic that you've just lost it and that you can't do it anymore mm. and then you find it again and you're like it's, I, I still got it and then it, it sounds like the most it's a it sounds like the greatest thing you've ever written mm. and then time passes and and you hate it again right. so it's just like this a never ending cycle of uh, finding yourself to be in a panic discovering something and, and completing a song and feeling totally brilliant mm. and fulfilled and then time passing and and, and hating yourself okay. all over again <laughs> okay it sounds like a it's a very it? healthy <laughs> lifestyle yeah. but then then obviously uh, well, the last album was partly about your mother, and, and I won't go into it too much because you've talked about it so much, but um, I read somewhere that you thought about, at, at that time, about quitting music. Is that right? Yeah, that was when I got said sales assistant in advertising, oh, okay. soulless job, yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I actually thought, I mean, before this project, I was in a band called Little Big League for three mm -hmm. years, and. Uh, we did a lot of DIY tour, just like really grueling DIY touring. We're like, and very unappreciated fans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, we put out two records. I had toured for three years. I had slept on, you know, disgusting couches that like smelled like piss and <laughs> played to like 15 Hot Topic teenagers in a cornfield in Indiana. Like I did the whole thing and uh, it just wasn't happening for us, and mm -hmm. um, our bass player had just left to play in another bigger band, uh, and he left saying that he had to join this band because they were going to be Jimmy Fallon big, and so I just felt like it wasn't meant for me, you know, mm -hmm. like I just, I, we, we just couldn't quite get there, and my mom got sick, and so I, you know, we went on indefinite hiatus, and I took care of her, and while I was, uh, after she passed away, I, I stayed in Oregon for a few more months taking care of my dad and mm -hmm. trying to get the house in order. Um, and I just needed like a, a project for myself. I needed like some kind of outlet. I needed some privacy to just, you know, process my feelings and, and have a moment to be there for myself instead of constantly for other people. And so I wrote that record and I just thought, you know, this is just for me. Like I don't, okay. you know, I didn't have any expectation at all. I thought maybe I could trick some label mm -hmm. into putting it out on vinyl and then maybe over the course of like 10 years slowly sell like 500 copies and maybe I'd be like, David Berman and like tour when I'm 40 after I've like accrued like a long like cult following or whatever um, and like operate some web store sure. or whatever. Um, so I wrote and recorded the record in Eugene and then I kind of sat on it for a few months because no one was waiting for it and, mm. and then I didn't like the mixes. I um, recruited my friend Ned Eisenberg in uh, New York and by then I had just decided, you know, I'm just going to finish this record. Uh, in my free time as a hobby uh, and I'm just gonna go to New York and I'm gonna try to make as much money as I possibly can because I always felt like if I wasn't doing art or pursuing music that I uh, would just would just get a job where I just could make as much money as right. possible and just like live very luxuriously. Um, so it's a kind I, of counterbalance. Yeah, yeah, the, the exactly. Day. Yeah, because it's just like, oh, I've never had, you know, I was like, my first job, I was like making 45 grand a year, and I was just like, it's so much money. Like, I've never had this much money in my entire life. 
Um, and then, yeah, it just felt so awful. And then uh, I was there for about eight months. And uh, over that time, I had finished the album and begged like 10 different labels. No one wanted the album uh, to put it out. And then eventually, Yellow yeah, okay, K really sit in the US. And the press cycle started, I think, in January of 2016, maybe? No, that's insane. No, 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 2015. <laughs> Um, and then I was invited to play South by Southwest, and then, um, yeah, I just quit my job and I was like, mm. okay, I guess this is time to throw my hat back in. So, so was, was that a welcome kind of re-entrance into the city world? It was insane. It was a world. I mean, it happened so quickly. Okay. Um, because I, yeah, I went in, what happened was, is, uh, in January we had like end of the year evaluations at work, and I mm. thought I was going to get a raise, <laughs> but really they were calling me in to tell me that I was doing a bad job. Okay. And so... <laughs> I went in and I was like, oh my god, like, I'm doing a bad job. And uh, they said, okay, well, we'll give you a two-month severance if you're not happy here. Mm. And I was just like, I'll take it. And I took it. And I had two months to figure it out. And by then, the record, the, the track singles had started coming out. It was doing really well. Um, and then I, 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 one South by Southwest showcase turned into eight. Okay. And yeah. then I got signed to Dead Oceans. And I got a booking agent. And all of this stuff happened. And I... Uh, got, went on the, got confirmed to go on the Mitski tour in June, mm. and so it's just pretty much been nonstop touring right. since then. It was just like, what the, where were you, where were you three <laughs> years ago? 